everyone. Hi, <laughs> we're here. This is my um, pencil sharpener, and then this is my portable pencil shavings catcher. It fits in your pocket, and I'm going to sell these online. Um, yeah, got to get it copyrighted. It's, that's your new job? Yeah, see, <laughs> let's put this on. Why, where's your electric? Pencil sharpener. Oh, you can't use it on that, can you? No, it has to have this little special guy. And look how easy this is. You just, like a little uh, uh, ashtray. Put this right oh, here. Oh boy, that's good to know. <clears throat> Pro tip. <laughs> <laughs> how long did it take you to figure that out? 20 years. <laughs> but you got it. I, I got it. Okay, well, let's roll and get started for real. Welcome to Studio Sunday. We're happy to have you with us. This week uh, was Comic-Con at Home Week. Terry did a panel on Wednesday and it's now on um, this YouTube channel if you missed it. Yeah. So take a look. Uh, there were lots of fun things going on uh, at the Comic-Con.org site. And I think it goes on through today as well. So check it out. The last um, day of the show? Yeah, the last day of the show. I'm exhausted. <laughs> All um, the walking. Anyway, I'm sure that they're, they have things posted that you can take a look at that they did during the week. Um, we got a lot of news coverage on TV, but it was all for the actors and the shows. Yeah. Well, that's typical. Yeah. So. <laughs> but we really missed it this year. Yeah. Um, I miss seeing my friends. I know. You know, all of the... We definitely don't miss all the prep work and all the hassles that go with getting there. But once you're there, it really truly is an amazing experience. Um, we really have missed being there and I didn't think we would. But we miss seeing our friends, we miss seeing our booth mates, we miss seeing our regular visitors to the booth. Mm -hmm. uh, we miss our neighbor's cartoon books and Albatross comics. And watching all the people, you know, in the costumes. Yeah, we miss the gorgeous weather. The enthusiasm of the young attendees, you know, that are just enjoying it, maybe for the first time. Well, that's true. Yeah. So, um, we're going to be there next year for sure, so you guys try to get there. The dates are July 22nd through the 25th, 2021. Let's all keep our fingers crossed that that one's going to happen. If it's, uh, well, anyway, let's, let's do that. <laughs> I'm not even going to say <laughs> what I wanted to say. That's about as far out on that limb as yeah, you want to go. I'm not going any further. Get back into the truck. <laughs> anyway, we were there 26 years in a row without missing a, without missing a show, so it really does feel strange not to be there. Oh, and besides that, it was a really quiet week here at Abstract Studio. We just kind of regrouped from um, getting books to the printer and... Terry announcing his new ser or his new graphic novel, not series. Right. And let's see, we oh, we are reprinting the 2020 sketchbook. If you were unable to get one earlier, you can now go to the store at abstractstudiocomics.com and pick one up. That's all I have this week. I mean, it's a it was a slow week. Well, yeah. As we far were. as exciting news goes. <laughs> yeah. Well, we can't put out something brand new every week. No, can we? we can't. We don't we can't. need any more drama so quiet week is good yeah let's go on all right so you want to get on the hot seat yeah okay both of our questions are from our friend james bella today uh oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> what did he say <laughs> okay the first one is all about me oh me 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 he says has terry ever drawn you in any of the books he's had appearances like on the how to draw cover but what about me, me, me? Have yeah. you ever drawn me? Yes. Um, where is that book I'm looking for? Okay. Hold on. I don't think you're ever supposed to leave the screen. I think you're supposed to. Uh, it keeps, keeps the viewer attentive. Um, what the hell? He walked off the set. <laughs> oh, wait, he's back. Okay, so not only did I draw you in a comic book, but I drew you in the Marvel Universe, which means this is canon. You are now a Marvel character, oh, Robin Oh, I Moore. love it. 
So here we are, my work in Ultimate Spider-Man. Ultimate Marvel Team-Up. Ultimate Marvel Team-Up. That's a very slick cover. And I did a Spider-Man story with uh, Brian Bittes. And, oh, let's see. There's Robin and I walking past um, the embassy of somewhere. That's us right there, honey. I'm not there. You don't even see me there. You're right there. <laughs> And then I see you put yourself in front of me. Well, I'm protecting you in case we're attacked. We're walking in front of an embassy. And there's uh, Francine and Kachu, and then some old guy. I don't know who that is. And then there's Robin, uh, and then some guy on her shoulder. And then there's a segue. It's actually the very first segue ever drawn in comics um, because they had just been announced Who's like this? a month earlier. Um, that's And this. That's a New York resident, and we did not get his permission, so... Oh, you can't mention No, me. but that old guy is um, a, a grand wizard for a Satanist cult in France. Ah, got I, it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so that is my one appearance in comics. Marvel. Oh, you can't even see me in that. Okay, I'm going to go take over the Spider-Man series and make Robin a main <laughs> character. So, James, no, he's never drawn me in comics. <laughs> Squeeze me. Wow, I thought it was like a big, you know, splash page. It doesn't get better than <laughs> bigger than being in Spider-Man. The only thing better than appearing in Spider-Man is being a Spider-Man villain. Because then you get, you know, 90% of the pages before he squirts you to a wall. <laughs> he squirts you to a wall? <laughs> He does. He leaves you stuck to a wall underneath a bunch of squirt and spit and, you know, paper I don't need shade. to hear that. Okay. <laughs> it's let's a gross move on. book. Thank you, James, for bringing that up. Yeah. Uh, thanks a lot, buddy. <laughs> okay. The second question is, why were some of the Rachel Rising covers scanned for print directly from pencils? What are the challenges or benefits of that? Actually, they were all penciled, weren't I, they? I, almost all of them. Because... Um, I was going for something that didn't look like my. I had, I had been tired of seeing my uh, little, little inking lines that were bitmap scanned, and the bitmap scans um, only do the black line, and I was scanning at 1200 DPI, and you could still see little aliasing, and some of my fine lines were not there, so I decided to, to switch for Rachel to a more earthy look. Instead of slick black ink, I wanted to stay with pencil and have everything and keep the grain, keep the shading and all that. Um, it's a challenge to draw a cover in pencil only because you have to be cleaner and um, you know there's all the usual smudging and the ghosting from the erase line. That stuff shows, so you have to be. It's a different type of craftsmanship to make it presentable. Um, it was fun. I loved it, and I thought it, I thought it gave I thought it gave the covers a more earthy look. Uh, I didn't want to be slick and polished with Rachel. Well, I'm not. <laughs> I'm raw and dirt. <laughs> well, they certainly look different than your other covers. So. Yeah, the other covers are meant to be, you know, uh, pen up art, but Rachel, I just wanted. You know, I wanted it to look like a, I don't know, a style all its own. Well, thank you, James, for the questions. So what are you drawing today, sir? I'm going to draw hands today. And I'm going to show you. So um, you know my pet peeve Oh. with your hands. The lobster. Is, I call it the lobster claw. He will, if you will look back on his stories, some of them, he has just a lobster claw for a hand and I'll say, do not put a lobster claw in there. There are no lobster claws in my, in my stories. <laughs> <laughs> it's super easy to draw. I think I could draw a lobster claw. Oh, not, yeah. not for sure, but I think I might be able to. I think so. Shark. <laughs> okay, so uh, that's it for me. I hope everybody has a good week and stay safe. Uh, we're dealing with the pa uh, pandemic spike here. And hurricane season. Just your average July here in Houston. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, you guys have a good week, and Terry will um, show you how to draw hands. Right here. Okay, going with, uh, if we stay in the Marvel Universe for a second, 
If you grew up on Marvel Comics, then you know the difference between a Kirby hand, <laughs> Kirby hand, um, and a Steve Ditko hand. So that's the hand of Galactus, and that's the hand of Spider-Man. And we know it well. Um, Steve Ditko uh, is known for his, you know, his hands would be very elegant and, um, you know, flipping the deal like that. And he did things that I can't do with my fingers. Like he would draw, you know, Spider-Man would have both fingers out and then just the two in there on the little clasper. And then he was using his little, um, you know, those uh, web web holders, they always look to me like that candy bar um, bit of honey. So every boy I know would buy a bit of honey and wrap it around his wrist and <laughs> try, to, try to shoot webbing out of it. The thing about the web shooter, uh, well, of course, was that it was getting clogged always at the wrong time, and it would just go <laughs> like that, and um, then... Craven or the Vulture would attack and uh, Spidey would have to, um, well, he, yeah, if you read them all, you know what happened. He would quickly run and hide and catch the next train back to Queens. <laughs> That's not true. I lied. Uh, but anyway, so Marvel hands, uh, Terry hand, um, uh, Steve Ditko hand, uh, Kirby hand. And then here's the infamous lobster hand that Robin accuses me of drawing, which <laughs> I don't draw lobster hands. Um, this, you know, when it came to these hands, this was the these were the two iconic uh, artists of the '60s until Neil Adams showed up, and Neil Adams is the one who showed up and started showing these kind of things, like, oh, there is a main tendon right here, and there's the back, and then all that. Neil is the one who did that beautiful illustrative art, like an Alex Kotsky type guy or a Alex Raymond. He had that next level of craftsmanship. So starting on uh, Green Lantern and everything else that he did, um, you began to get these more eloquent um, art styles that really have a lot to do with where how we got the really great artists that we have today, like um, Alex Ross. A lot of Alex's in the in the fine arts field, isn't there? So um, anyway, these are these are iconic guys. The Kirby guy, Kirby always drew. Um, like, it's like every hand was belonged to a stocky bodybuilder, which is kind of describes Kirby himself. Um, basically, that was a Kirby hand, stubby fingers, very strong, and that's why you got that uh, iconic design for like Galactus and. Um, uh, the thing, uh, these powerhouses, and they made for these fantastic big fists that I that could punch through a wall, and I would not want that fist coming at my uh, delicate schnoz. But um, and then Ditko was he drew like a ballet. This is the hand of Spider-Man, but it's also the hand of uh, Doctor Strange, and um, the, the black arts and all that. It was it was like. It was like whatever power was in the person was flung in an artistic ballet way, you know? Uh, whereas uh, Kirby's world, we punched our way out of Asgard, punched our way out of the Galactus problem. and um, So it had a lot to do with the power of the art. Um, I don't do any of that. <laughs> I do this. I draw lobster hands on gorillas. Um, Oh, this, I didn't even think about this before, but this is a cover from Motor Girl um, where all the little uh, cartoon space aliens have three fingers, like the old classic cartoon style. In the classic cartoon style, uh, you gave your cartoon characters three fingers because, um, well, I guess Disney started that uh, because it was a uh, safe time from drawing all five. And also it allowed for these little hands, these little critter hands to be simpler and not so complex as to have a lot of digits around them. And you want to see an example of little hands with a lot of complex little digits? Look at peanuts. They have five fingers. Well, they actually have four fingers and a thumb, which is just weird, right? Um, but he sometimes you could see that Schultz was barely able to get 
uh, you know, there'd be that last finger would be way over here to the side, right? And that's very typical for a peanuts. Um, I, in this, what I typically did with uh, hands was learning how to draw them through cartooning like this. Well, how to grab, how to look at the hand from the back side, not just always from the top. Um, what it takes to wrap your fingers around something and where does that thumb go when you finally do that? These two thumbs are not in the same position um, because of how the hand approaches that uh, the wheel that it has to grasp. And then drawing it from this side where you can see how it all works. There's that big um, bone right there. You always want to know where that is. That's kind of a key. There, so I'm ready to move on to the drawing part. Um, I just want to show you this real quick. You get into um, how to hold things very quickly when you start drawing stories. And the, one of the problems is like, okay, I can draw from this side, but what if he turns it upside down and now I have to draw underside of the palm holding a bottle? What happens up there? And that becomes kind of a problem for new artists where when you have to draw fingers that are not seen in order to get this whole hand to look right. So in order to draw that, you still need to know that you had fingers up there and then your palm, which was there, basically. And so you were drawing the underside of the hand in order to get that bottle in there. That's, a, that's harder to imagine than drawing the top of the hand and you just wrap your fingers around it and you know there's a thumb under there and there's your bottle. See the difference? So at all times you need to know where your, your fingers are. <clears throat> Can I also just point out that um, one of the weird things I learned in high school was that these fingers on an anatomy chart They're called phalanges. On anatomy charts. Why? I have never heard that word once I got out of high school. I've never heard a doctor say it. I never heard a coroner or medical examiner say it. Um, I've never heard it on the news. A man breaks his phalanges on a football field. <laughs> Where that we need to get rid of that word. Uh, I'm just saying Okay, sorry. I bumped the camera with my head um, Okay, here's Here's the trick to hands you have the the forearm here and Really your orientation for the hand starts at the uh, elbow Because this elbow uh, is this called an ulna? somewhere in here, and the ulna radius. Anyway, this elbow, to me, makes a straight line to there. So when people are young and have no body fat, this is basically, you basically don't see that line. You just, you just see, I keep bumping this, don't I? Sorry. You basically just see a regular arm. When people get older, you'll start to see this show up more, and this will show up more, and then the fat will grow down in here and now you have your grandma's arm. And then skin starts collecting down, starts flopping there. And that's, we said that last week, that's like your knuckle joint, right? Right in there. So always draw that, that part. See how that pushes the... Actually, I'm doing the finger to show you a little elbow lesson. That's backwards, isn't it? So you do the elbow like this and it makes your finger bend. Get to the ulna and then um, there's a big uh, intersection of bones right here. Probably about 35 million bones right there. And then uh, the next key point is this. This is the most prominent knuckle. This is the one that does the damage when it hits your face. <laughs> um, so knuckle, prominent knuckle, knuckle, subdued knuckle, like that. 
and then there's a radius of the radius comes in like this so it's round so the radius is an arc and it comes back that is going to be a little bit further in than this so it's in terms of height like a height chart it went like this so think of your fingers as a chart there's your first knuckle second knuckle so if you're uh, a computer person just think of your think of that as a graph so that's what you're drawing here if these guys go straight that's how far they go this uh, the length of the fingers changes a lot if somebody is tall and slender uh, like a model these fingers can be real long um, it's it's kind of a uh, the hand is not a standard size. Uh, fingers can be short and stubby. Fingers can be very long and all that. It's part of the personality of the person you're drawing. Um, and then down in here is where there is going to be um, a skin connection and then another phalange bone that's going out like that. So that's technically what you're drawing. Now the beautiful side of it is uh, is that you don't have to know every single bone that's in there. Um, you'll never know their name until you break one and the doctor tells you what it is. That's Phalange Digitagis Latinus uh, Bombastic. <laughs> um, the tricks to drawing the hand, uh, just getting the movements that you want out of it, is to watch wrist, uh, that bone, prominent bone, and then I key off whatever the first finger is doing. So if this hand is just hanging relaxed, that's, that's my relaxed start. And then these fingers naturally curl up like that. So if you let your hand just hang like that, and you can tell my hands dry from uh, washing it so much. Anyway, if you just let your hand hang like that, that's what you're getting. And then if you point, grab, that's what you're trying to draw. One trick that I learned, if you look at this from the other side, uh, if nobody's ever pointed it out to you before, going from the other side, that uh, prominent bone is, is kind of hidden, but you insinuate it with a little rise in your wrist there. Um, and then you know that the prominent knuckle is going to come straight down the middle and then the second the first finger knuckle and these fingers wrap up in here okay I'm drawing this to show you the thumb the thumb is just just right behind that the thumb knuckle is just behind that knuckle and a lot of people make the mistake of going like this. And they go, Dad, come it, why doesn't my hand look right? Because there your thumb doesn't connect to the finger like this. It's not a V. It's a U. This makes a huge difference. And when you get over here. The top of the bone on this is not over here on this side, it's over here in the middle. So if you have the thumb width, the top of this bone is here, and now you're looking at the top of the thumb. Like that. The U is important, guys. It's what gives your uh, hand volume. So, um, and it's what allows you to uh, put your hand around stuff and grab things. It just naturally, you know, things naturally fit, like the limb of the tree that you used to climb up. Um, your, well, your great great grandparents times a hundred thousand. So that that's, it's a U. There. It's 
I can't even get it to be, I can get it to be a V like that, but it, it's an effort. It hangs naturally as a U so that it can grab things like the handlebars of a motorcycle, a Harley, um, or a rope, tree, banana. So the, the next thing to remember is that when you make the fist, the U is still there. So you have these guys come in, look at the distance between the fingers and the thumb already, which actually, that's a karate thing. But um, the distance, and this allows this, that's why this can get so far over in here, is because it's already way down, and then when it wraps up, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not back here. Um, one thing that we all used to laugh at, there was a famous artist who always drew fighting fists with the thumb in sight, <laughs> which is, if you've ever hit anything with your thumb inside your fingers, <laughs> this is an excellent way to break your thumb immediately. Uh, we couldn't believe it. And I, to this day, I think he still draws it that way. I don't, I'm not going to say who it is. Anyway, this is, this is how you make a fist. And you don't hit with this part, you hit with that part right there. And you keep a straight line, otherwise you will break your wrist. So you need to know this stuff to draw action. So when somebody's doing a power punch, it's a straight line from this knuckle through, through here. And this is why you need a strong wrist and why you do all those exercises. I don't have a strong wrist. So you're hitting, this entire thing is one two by four being shoved into something. So you're not hitting with this because these will flex and bend and all that. You're hitting with this because it's one bone all the way back. And then when by the time you do the extension, this whole arm is supposed to be connected to, I don't know how I got into punching, but it's, there's the shoulder, one line, and then the shoulder was not swung around the body. You don't, you don't do that. That's a soft hit. <clears throat> That's how you hit your friend. If you actually want to uh, stop somebody who's a real threat, you throw your entire back into it. And it's the entire body, body swung like this. The entire body threw that, threw that bone at it. And when you see the good, the good uh, artists, um, that can really draw great action. They know that if they, you know, those guys uh, also box and stuff like that. They're very active. A lot of them, some of them are bodybuilders actually. They know all this stuff. So um, they know that they're throwing their entire body into the deal. And now it's not however much this arm weighs and how, it, say that arm weighs uh, 25 pounds and you just flung it at somebody. Well, that's a, that's a soft hit. If the, per if the bodybuilder weighs, or the person weighs 200 pounds, and they throw 200 pounds behind this, that's gonna break your freaking jaw. That's when you're really mad. <laughs> um, okay, that's it for me today, guys. I, I hope that this has been helpful, and uh, good luck with your hands.